Hello everyone! In this week's video, I'm attempting TikTok art challenges. I had a lot of fun the last time I did this, and I found some more challenges I wanted to try. The first challenge I'll call the Emoji Challenge is you use a TikTok filter and it'll assign you three random emojis. I then have to make a picture based off the emojis. So the emojis I got were a wilting rose, mind blown, and green heart. As you can see from my expression, I wasn't sure what to do with these. <laughs> so I started to try to brainstorm ideas for these emojis and I was having a really hard time like nothing was coming to me. It's mostly because of the mind blown emoji. According to Google, mind blown is used as an exclamatory response to surprising or interesting facts or enlightening information. And I didn't know how to combine that with wilting roses. The only thing I kind of thought of is a person being shocked that a rose was wilting, but I didn't really know if that fit mind blown. I tried to think of ideas for like an hour, maybe more, and I just couldn't get inspiration from these emojis. Honestly, I was starting to get a bit frustrated with myself, which wasn't helping. So I decided to take a break from this challenge and move on to the second one I had planned to do. This challenge is you need to create a character based off your favorite ice cream. I hadn't seen this one very many times before and it sounded fun. So I thought I'd give it a try. So the hair color needs to be the same as my favorite ice cream flavor. I like mint ice cream, so the hair color will be mint green. If I like sprinkles, they get a scar. And if I don't, they get a tattoo. I like sprinkles, so they'll get a scar. If I've made homemade ice cream, they get a natural eye color. And if I haven't, their eye color is unnatural. I've never made ice cream at home, so it's going to be an unnatural eye color. If I like cones, they are a knight. And if I don't, they are a wizard. I like cones, so my character is a knight. Also, the creator dares us to draw a background, so I will include that as well. Okay, so let's draw this character. So, like I mentioned, I was feeling a bit annoyed. I was also feeling kind of art blocky, so I decided to keep things simple for this picture. A uh, part of me wanted to draw a fancy knight pose and draw fancy armor and a background. But I just wasn't feeling up to it in that moment. Instead of overthinking things, I decided to just start drawing because I was feeling very stuck in my head this day. Um, so I did a challenge similar to this in my last TikTok challenge video, but for that one I created a fairy. Since I created a girl character last time, I decided to do a boy character this time, and I made him an elf just because I felt like it. <laughs> Because he is a knight and has a scar, I thought I'd make him a serious character and maybe a bit intimidating. I imagine he is quite tall and is maybe in his super late teens or early 20s. Also, I decided to put the scar on his ear and also have a bit of his ear be uh, gone, I guess. I imagine if you are a sword fighting elf, this kind of thing may happen. It's happened to real people and our ears don't even stick out that much. Uh, so yeah, I imagine you'd want to protect your ears if you're a sword fighting elf. <laughs> Maybe he wasn't wearing his helmet. Uh, plus I thought having some of his ear be missing made his design kind of interesting and I didn't want to place the scar on his face. All the spots I kept thinking of just felt really basic. For the hairstyle, I decided to make it pretty short, mostly because none of my male characters have really short hair. Well, I guess Finley's hair is pretty short, but he can still like style it and stuff. Whereas this hair is so short that you can't do much with it. Uh, plus since he's a knight, it's more practical. For the armor, I was using the soldier's armor from The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild as a reference. I always like the style of that armor. As I was drawing this, I did like the simplicity of drawing the headshot, but I did kind of want to design his armor. So later on, I do a quick sketch of his full body and I'll show that in a bit. Oh, so like I mentioned, in my last TikTok challenge video, I designed a fairy. I drew her in my chibi elf style, and I imagine she is in the same universe as my other fairy-like characters, Priya and Carson. In the video, I asked you all for name suggestions because I couldn't really think of a name for her. There were so many good names to choose from, and thank you to everyone that suggested a name. For now, I think her name might be Silva, it means forest, and I feel like it fits her. For short, people call her Sil. I kind of liked the name Silva because it kind of sounds like silver and her hair is white. Uh, so it kind of matches that, but it also means forest. And she looks very foresty. And I thought the nickname Sil sounded kind of cute. 
Also, I was talking about how I didn't know what role the winged people would have in Pariah and Carson's world. Pariah and Carson don't have wings and can grow plants. And as I was thinking of what the winged people's role would be, I thought maybe they could be like royals or people that oversee and protect uh, different sectors of the land. They are able to harness energy from the plants that are grown and can use that energy to aid the people and the land. Uh, maybe they also have something to do with weather, uh, but I'm not totally sure. This is all a very rough idea and may not stay, but I do like the concept. I think it's kind of interesting. So for this character's colors, his hair needs to be mint. And I made his skin on the darker side because I thought it'd be a nice contrast to the light hair. Plus it kind of reminds me of chocolate and mint ice cream often has chocolate chips in it. His eye color needs to be unnatural. For now it's pink, but I'm considering changing it to purple uh, because mint plants have purple flowers. So I'm wondering if purple would be a better color than the pink. I'm not totally decided on the eye color. The challenge also wants me to draw a background. For mine, I made a whole bunch of lines to make a window and then transform them to make them be in perspective. I imagine he is inside the castle, so I also added some red curtains. I'm also going to make the lighting a bit more dramatic, just to make things a little less boring. So like I said, I made this character an elf just because I felt like it, but because I made him an elf, I wanted to see what he would look like if I chibi elfified him. Uh, so I'm going to be drawing him in my chibi elf style. Um, but before we do that, here is the quick headshot I drew of him. I think he looks cool and he has the vibe I was going for. Oh, also I gave him a cut in his eyebrow, so I guess he kind of has two scars. <laughs> so here's where I am quickly sketching out his full armor and also drawing him in my chibi elf style. I had so much fun drawing him in the style. He looks so tiny and grumpy. <laughs> drawing this actually got me out of my kind of sour mood because I liked drawing it so much. His proportions are styled kind of big because like I said, I imagine he is tall and a bit older. So he doesn't look as young as Pariah and Carson who are much younger than him. Also, because the winged characters are possibly going to be royals in Pariah and Carson's world, I imagine this character is Silva's personal guard. Also, what should I name this character? I keep wanting to call him Chip, and no, it's not because of this, <laughs> but because of like mint chip ice cream. It turns out Chip can be short for Charles or Christopher. Maybe his name could be Christopher, but people call him Chip. Or maybe it's a bad nickname that came about after the ear incident. <laughs> I'm not totally sure. But right now I kind of just want to call him Chip. But that may not end up being his name. Also, just because I wanted to, I drew in Silva for scale. I imagine she is much smaller than him. Also, I really like drawing her cloak closed. I think it looks cute and kind of like Hollow Knight. Uh, but yeah, I kind of liked drawing in this little Silva. <laughs> So here is my new character that is possibly named Chip. I quite like him and it was a lot of fun designing him based off of my favorite ice cream. I didn't think I'd get this result, but I am happy with the result and it was a lot of fun. So like I said, drawing chibi elfified Chip helped raise my mood and I was feeling ready to take another attempt at the emoji challenge. Like I said before, the main one that was giving me issues was the mind blown emoji. And as I was thinking about it, I thought, what if I took the phrase mind blown literally? And then I thought that would be gross and I wouldn't want to draw that. But then I had the idea that maybe the thing I draw isn't human. Maybe they are a robot or a mannequin. So my idea is that there is this robot or a mannequin and the top of its head is broken and there are wilting roses coming out from the head. I wasn't sure if I should go with this idea because it's kind of odd and not something I would usually do. Uh, but the point of challenges is to try new things, so I went with it. I wasn't totally sure how to go about making this thing look human, but not too human. I started to think about Barbie dolls, so I tried to stylize the body a lot like that. For the neck, I broke it up into sections because I imagined for the neck to move, it would need to have separate parts that kind of move about. If it's a robot, but it might be a mannequin. In my head, I was thinking more robot, <laughs> I think. Uh, for the joints, like the shoulder, I drew them a lot like a doll would be. 
Uh, so I had kind of like a ball and socket joint right there. For this picture, I'll be keeping it very loose and sketchy. I thought it would fit the feeling of this picture. Oh, also to incorporate the green heart, I'm just going to make the main color be green. I wasn't sure how else to incorporate a green heart, but since it's just green, I thought I would just make the overall color be green. I really like to draw flowers, but I don't often draw dead ones. I looked up references that me draw them. Roses are probably my least favorite flower to draw, mostly because they're so complicated. Uh, but thankfully drawing wilting ones is much easier. I often prefer to draw simpler flowers like daisies or other flowers that don't have a very complicated shape. <laughs> For the background, I decided to add a tile pattern to make it less empty feeling. I also added a bunch of hanging vines to make the area feel overgrown and secluded. Like no one has come here in a while. I actually really like drawing the vines. I added little thorns to them, kind of like how roses have thorns, uh, but they're pretty fun to draw. Lastly, to make things more interesting, I added some gradients and highlights. I decided to have there be a light source in the upper left and kind of have light rays coming in. I did struggle with this challenge at first, but I did eventually come up with a concept I feel like goes along with the random emojis I got. This definitely made me draw something different and it's not something I would usually draw. So this was an interesting challenge to do. If you are feeling like you need some inspiration or you can't think of any interesting ideas for what you want to do, I recommend trying it. So this last challenge is one I've been wanting to do for a while and basically you set your screen to grayscale and try to color a picture but you can't see the colors. This sounds very hard uh, so we'll see how this goes. So first I need a picture that I can color. When I was trying to think of something that I wanted to draw, I thought of Lloyd Forger from Spy Family. I've been wanting to draw him since I started watching the anime, so I thought this was a good opportunity to draw him. Plus, I wanted to do fan art because then I would have specific colors that I need to grab. Compared to if it was original art, I could just kind of make the colors be whatever I want, but I wanted to try to grab specific colors. And plus, since Lloyd is a spy in kind of an uh, older-ish time period, I feel like if worse came to worse and I had to keep the picture black and white because the colors are ugly, it wouldn't be too weird. <laughs> It'd maybe just look cool and dramatic. Uh, so right now I am sketching out the pose. Lloyd will be wearing his usual green suit outfit. Also, I really like the color of his suit. I feel like it's a unique color. Let's hope I am able to match that color later on. For Lloyd's pose, I decided to have him holding a pistol and having one hand in his pant pocket. I think this is the first time I've drawn a character holding a pistol, so it was a bit tricky and I definitely needed references. I was about to go grab one of my brother's BB toy pistols to use as a reference, uh, but the pics I found on Google did the job thankfully. Also I was very tempted to add a silencer to the pistol because of Anya, <laughs> uh, but I always feel like pistols look cooler without the silencer, uh, so I didn't add that. Lloyd is a really cool character and he's a spy, so I wanted his pose to have a really cool feel to it, and uh, I hope it does. Due to time constraints, we are skipping the cleanup sketch footage and going straight to line art. I talked a lot more about the first two challenges than I thought I would, uh, so we need to cut some of the footage from this one, but it's okay, seeing both the cleanup sketch and the line art is a bit redundant sometimes. Speaking of line art, I want to maybe try changing my line art style a bit. I didn't change it in this video, but I think it's something I want to try to do in the future. For a while, I was doing more sketchy pictures with no line art. It was just kind of sketchy. And more recently, I've gone back to doing line art. I chose to do line art for this picture because I knew it would make the coloring part a little easier. And because I knew the coloring would be a challenge, I wanted to make it just a bit easier for myself. <laughs> uh, anyways, I want to play around with how I do line art or maybe try to find a different brush. I want to try to include variation, which is something that's a bit hard for me to do with my current tablet settings. Uh, so I have my tablet sensitivity curve set so that I don't need to apply a ton of pressure to my pen. It's easier on my wrist. But because of that, it's kind of hard to get variation in pressure because even if I apply a very little amount of pressure, my brush doesn't get that much smaller. I hope that all makes sense. Um, but yeah, I want to try to play around with my tablet settings and also maybe try to find a pen that has more line variation in it. Variation is, I think, something I like about my sketches because they kind of get a natural variation in them. 
because of where I make my sketches more thin or thicker. But when I'm doing line art, it doesn't change all that much. Like it does a little bit, but not a ton. Uh, so yeah, in future illustrations, maybe I'll try uh, some new things with my line art. Okay, so now it's time to set my screen to grayscale. I do this by going to my computer settings. So now I can't see colors. Oh boy. So I need to start by applying the base colors and this part is really important. If I go wrong here, everything will be wrong. Uh, so no pressure. <laughs> so I have been using Clip Studio Paint for like 10 years or something. So it would be a bit weird if I couldn't remember the color placement of colors on the wheel. I know this area is red and orange and this area is more of a turquoisey bluey area. So I'm going to try my best to remember where the colors are. For the skin color, I'm thinking it's about here. I'm also relying a bit on my muscle memory. And when making light skin tones, I think I go to around this area. Also, I changed the background color to a darker gray to help me with the values. It can be hard to judge values on a white background. Also, just in case you don't know, value refers to how light or dark a color is. Uh, so Lloyd has blonde hair, and a lot of times blonde hair isn't very different in value than the skin color if a character has light skin. So I'm going to try to pick a more yellow color that's not too different in value from the skin. Also, to help me adjust the colors, I often switch to the sliders to help me be more accurate. I like how I can individually change the hue, saturation, and value. So yeah, basically for the rest of the base colors, I just try my best to guess what colors I am picking. It was kind of interesting because I was definitely paying more attention to the value of the color that I was picking. Most of the time I focus more on the hue, but since I can't see that, I have to pay more attention to the value. <laughs> Also, it's really weird seeing the color wheel in grayscale. So many of the colors are the same value. I was hoping there would be a difference so it would be easier to see where one color ends and another one starts. Uh, but they all kind of just mush together. So now it's time for shading and I was questioning if I should do my full shading or make things simple and only do cell shading, kind of like in my webcomic. But I decided I'm not going to take the easy way out. I'm going to try to fully shade it with soft shading, cell shading, and also blending. So my method for doing the shading is I would select my base color slightly, move my hue to be more red, or for the greens I make them more blue, and I'd set the layer with the shading to multiply. Since I'm selecting my base color first and then adjusting it, I figured I couldn't go too wrong with the colors. Thankfully my selection tool still selects colors, it doesn't select grayscale. <laughs> um, but at the same time, if my base color is really off, then it'll be even more off. So this definitely was challenging, but at the same time, it was fun working in black and white. It was cool seeing the different values and focusing more on those instead of the colors. A lot of times I only see my pictures with no color when I'm checking the values. Sometimes if I want to make sure my pictures have enough contrast, I'll make it black and white to see if the values are different enough. If I think some of them are too similar, I'll make adjustments. But in this case, I'm seeing the black and white the whole time, so it feels really different. One of the tricky parts is that I didn't know how to go about adding more colors and variation in colors to my shading because I couldn't see the hues and I couldn't tell if I wanted to make the shading more blue in some areas or more red or add an interesting color that maybe doesn't totally belong but I just add it because I think it looks cool. <laughs> uh, so because of this, I kept feeling like the shading was going to look dull in the end or maybe kind of boring because I couldn't add more colors to it like I usually do. I mean, I could have maybe tried to, uh, but I wasn't totally sure how to go about doing it because I couldn't see the colors. <laughs> Also, it took so much willpower for me to not turn the screen back to color and see how things were going. Like there were so many times I wanted to do that. I'd be like, I just want to take a little peek to see how the colors look. But then I'd be like, no, you can't. That would ruin the challenge. You can't see the colors until it's done. But then I'd also be like, but I want to see the colors. <laughs> Thankfully, I stayed strong and I kept the screen black and white the whole time. Uh, so yeah. I never saw the colors. I would say the trickiest part was definitely the clothing. When I shade the clothes, I like to do a lot of blending, but for some reason blending without color just wasn't working with my brain and it was feeling really weird. 
Like I said, I like to add different hues and colors, but I can't do that. Plus I was worried I might be picking bad colors and things would become muddy. So yeah, the blending part was kind of tricky. So I did think working in black and white was fun, but I did feel a bit sad when I was coloring the eyes. For the eyes, I really like coloring them, uh, but in this case, they're just gray. So it felt a little boring. Oh, also in a moment, I'll be changing my line art color because that's something I often do. And it was really weird trying to change my line art color without seeing the color. <laughs> As I kept getting closer and closer to finishing the coloring, I was getting progressively more excited, but also nervous. I was excited to see if I was close in any way to the original colors, but also nervous to see if I was really off and spent all this time coloring and shading with really ugly colors. Uh, but now it's time for the moment of truth. Let's see how the coloring turned out. Wow, okay, so I was not expecting the colors to be so close. I was expecting the colors to be super off, but they're actually not too bad. The colors are really saturated, especially with the clothes, but overall it's not too bad. I feel like I got the tie color, eye color, and hair color all really close. Uh, so I did decide to make an adjusted version. I just used some color filters to adjust the colors. I kind of just had to make things more desaturated. Oh, also, just because I wanted to, I made this version with some fancy lighting. I spent a decent amount of time on this drawing of Lloyd, so I wanted to give it the shading I felt it deserved. <laughs> I do have to say this challenge was very challenging and confusing at times, but it did turn out better than I expected, so I'm really happy. I had so much fun doing these TikTok challenges. And if you enjoyed watching, please consider subscribing and turning all notifications on. And if you have any challenge suggestions, let me hear about them down in the comments. Before we end, I want to thank my super awesome patrons and YouTube members. I want to say hello to my new members, Sunshine Crystal, Just Ishi, Michael, Mindo Flyrick, and JS. Thank you all so very much for your support. It means so much to me. And thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you all next week in my next video. Bye! <laughs>